question here is about implementing a trailing stop loss. So for a short here, right? We want to, uh, this person wants the stop loss uh, placed at the highest high plus one tick of the last three bars, right? So fairly standard trailing stop loss. But the the detail or the specific part of this comes when trailing is allowed, right? So trailing is only permitted when the last bar's high is lower than the previous bar high, right? So in other words, we have a triggering condition here, right? So there's a specific condition that triggers the movement of the stop loss to the next price level lower, right? Or price level higher, you know, depending on the trade direction, obviously, right? So, all right, so this is all about the stop loss here. So I'm just use a market entry, get things started. There we go. All right, so let's see. Yeah, so I'm gonna start off by going to the trailing menu here and then use the previous bar low, high with trailing, right? Because the question here is using, you know, bar prices as well, right? The highest high of the last three bars, right? So that's what this previous bar high, low, high is. So let's start off with that. And then we can open up the stop loss and start modifying it, you know, to match uh, this specific description here. So the initial placement is going to be, so for, uh, yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna reverse all this stuff and implement it for a long trade, right? So we're gonna use the low price of the last three bars, right? So the look back period, right, is gonna be three. And then the processing here, right, is we want the lowest low of the last three bars. So that would be the minimum value for, right, the last three uh, low prices, right? So we want the minimum value there, right? And so, you know, uh, reversely, right, if it was a short trade, we're taking the high of the last three bars and we want the maximum value, right? So in other words, the highest high of the last three bars there. And there's a one tick offset here, right? So let's put a negative one in there for, remember for a long trade, it'd be a negative one value there. So one tick lower than the low of the last three bars. All right, so there's our initial placement. And then we just need to go into the trailing actions and we'll stretch this out a little bit and go into the actions and adjust this menu to exactly the same way, right? So you notice, right, this menu is exactly the same as, you know, the menu we just modified in the, in the options tab. So we're gonna use the low of the last three bars and again, all right, this is already set to the minimum value. And then we just need to add that one tick offset there. All right. Now, now here's where we implement the conditional trailing trigger here, right? So the current, yeah, so I'm going to reverse this here, right? So the, um, yeah, so the current bar you know, really this would be, the, so the current bar is low, needs to be lower than the previous bar is low. So that is our triggering condition that activates, you know, moving that stop loss there. So to do that, right, so to compare, you know, the uh, current bar low to the previous bar low, we're gonna use price versus indicator, right? So this price versus indicator, it can also do price versus price, and it can do indicator versus indicator. So remember, you know, we build tools that are designed to be flexible, you know, so nothing would really ever be locked into price versus price um, only there. So, all right, so input A is the close. And so let's adjust that. Input A would be the low, right? So that would be the low of 
the current bar. So look back of one, right? Would be the, in other words, the last closed bar. So, and then we want to compare that to input B here. And input B, you know, we're not using an indicator, so we're going to change the mode over to price, right? And there, so there's our low price, but we want to look, you know, one bar back. And so for this to be the low of the previous bar, we're going to, we, we're going to keep the single value, right? So we want to look at the single value of two bars back, right? So in other words, you know, if you used minimum value, that would be the lowest low of the last two bars, but we want the low of the second bar back, right? Yeah. So there we go. So input A, right, is the uh, last bar's low, and input B is now the previous bar's low. And now it's a matter of figuring out, you know, for a long trade, what kind of uh, uh, comparison are we doing? What kind of conditional, yeah, what condition are we looking for here? So we want, uh, yeah, we want A, so we want the low to be actually, yeah, we want the last bar's low or A to be above B, but we don't want it to be equal. So yeah, it doesn't say anything about equals here. So let's get rid of the equal part. We just want A above B. And for a short trade, we would want the high of the last bar to be lower than the high of the previous bar. So that would be A is below B. And so let's get rid of the equal part. There we go. All right. So that is the specific, you know, triggering condition here that permits moving that stop loss or trailing that stop loss there. Now, because we have, because this requirement has to be met on every single bar, right? Not just once, but every single bar, this needs to be evaluated. Uh, right. So so every time, right, the bar high is lower than the previous bar stop that. Right. So that needs to occur on every single bar. So what that means is if this trigger has to keep reoccurring, then, you know, before this trailing rule can repeat itself. Right. So normally the triggers, they just have to occur one time. Right, that's how most people think of trailing a stop loss is just look for this, you know, look for this condition, whatever it may be, once, and then you're good to go, and then just keep trailing your stop loss. Right. But this is very but this is unique where it or yeah, as every bar closes, you have to constantly keep evaluating this trigger condition. So in the repeat, we need to enable the only repeat when re-triggered. Right. And so the trigger is the triggers over here. So in other words, yeah, this trigger condition has to keep repeating before this trailing stop loss can can move the order, you know, once again. Yeah. So, yeah, so using this um, option here, only repeat when re triggered. That's the key to this uh, last conditional part there. And so with that, let's go take this for a spin. Let's see. Well, let's go long here. I'll take a guess. So there we go. Last three bars. That's the low of the last three closed bars there. And this is still the lowest low of the last three closed bars. There we go. We just moved up one. And it looks like, yeah, we move up, up again here. So here's the last three bars. All right. And so you notice that this low was not lower than the previous bars low. So that stop loss just st stuck there, right? It, it stayed and, and didn't move any further. Uh, let's see here. Should I try and go long again? Now this low, 
is not higher than the previous bar so the stop loss is not going to move and it's probably going to get hit yep there we go <laughs> all right let's try going short so there we go last three bars oh there we go last three bars so the highs are moving lower and so as long as this high stays lower we'll trail down one more time Yep, there we go. All right now, this bar is high, is this high is higher, so that stop loss is not going to move, and it got hit. So, all right, at least we had you know uh, the market worked with us a couple times, and we were able to yeah able to see that stop loss there. Um, you know, moving and and not moving. Thing. let's try one more time there all right so this high is higher so that stop loss is not going to move this time all right so far that high is lower so we should get a step down to here there we go and yeah it looks like yeah that's the highest high so it's probably going to stay there for a couple of bars. Yep. All right. So if this high stays lower, there we go. We had to move down. So great. So there we go. That was a good example. We got to thank the market for working with us <laughs> on that one. So, yeah. All right. So um, let me go to the Q&A. And, um, you know, yeah, you know, you, you got to keep in mind here, this is one of the problems with trailing, you know, uh, bar prices nowadays with NinjaTrader 8 is NinjaTrader will now throw up this stop loss error here. So, you know, just pay attention here and, and keep these kind of cleared out. So uh, it's a shame that Ninja's error messages will actually lock up NinjaTrader if you don't clear those out. So I'm um, surprised they haven't fixed that problem yet. 